In this movie, the third in the series in the animation section, we're going to take a look at keyframes, and we're going to look at them in much more detail than we have in the earlier movies where I've kind of had to use keyframes to demonstrate some of the capabilities of Anime Studio Pro. If you have access to the work files and want to work on this file, you can open up 0703 keyframes and see exactly what we're doing here. In our preceding movie, the one just before this, we created some switch layers and we created some keyframes in that layer so I could show you how the switch layer worked. Before I go into more info on keyframes, I want to describe real briefly what they are. Back in the way, way, way back days of Disney and other animators when they were first getting going, the lead animator in a studio had the most skill. He also had the most experience. So during an animated feature production, it was his job to follow the storyline and at key intervals or keyframes draw the scene. Then all the junior animators would draw all the frames in between those key frames to fill in the illusion of motion. Well, fortunately, the computer does that for us, and when we designate a keyframe, we're telling the software that this is a point in time I want you to remember, and then you get to figure out what happens between those key points in time. We've got that set up. You've seen me do it. It's very, very intuitive. We're also going to do some other things with this file to demonstrate keyframes. However, the first thing I wanted to do was go over in a little more detail what some of these tools are here in the timeline. We'll cover some specific ones in more detail later, but the ones we'll be dealing with here are delete, copy, paste, settings. Then we've got our little minus sign and plus sign. This is simply a zoom control for the timeline. If you click the minus key here, we are able to see more and more of our timeline as we go down the line. So by default, it's at the closest setting for about three seconds worth of animation at 24 frames a second. We have special settings here. I'll select that and open it and move it over so you can see it. We have the ability to show all sorts of features within our timeline, and all these features can be keyframed. So if you want to control something like down here, if you roll your mouse over it, it will show you a little help. In this case, Bone Dynamics. If we want to be able to keyframe Bone Dynamics and have them maybe get less springy over time, then you need to come up to the settings, enable that checkbox, and then select OK. Likewise for any of the other settings, and we'll start exploring some of those other settings or features in some later movies that we work on. The delete, copy, and paste, as you might guess, have to do directly with the keyframe. You saw me select this keyframe in the switch layer one and simply do copy. Then I move down the timeline and selected paste. If I do that now with our center one, let me move our timeline marker here. That's the surprise eyes. With that highlighted and it's turning red, I can do copy, move down the timeline, do paste, and there it is. And now we've got an additional level of animation there. Likewise, if I want to select all the keyframes, I can actually copy them all, move down the timeline, do paste, and it will paste them all. So this is a very quick way to go ahead and create a little bit of repetitive motion, but we will be looking at a special feature called cycling later on. I'll go ahead and undo those things I just did, so we're back to our basic file here. We'll be taking a look at graph mode and onion skins later on as it deals with some specific motion control and animation features when we get to that point. So now we understand what keyframes are, those key points in time, we're going to take a look at a very special little feature that we can do with eye switches or the switch layers. That is, switch layers can be part of a bone layer. Let's go ahead and add a bone layer right now and then keyframe some of the behavior. We'll come down to bone. We've added bone and look, we've got some red going on here. We have some other items happening. Oh, that lets me know that something bad just occurred. This is what you always want to do when you work on things like bone layers, is move the timeline back to zero. So I'm going to undo that change. If it will let me, I guess it won't. Let me go ahead and delete that layer. It'll ask if I want to delete that. I'll say yes. Let me move my time marker down there to zero. Now when we add a bone layer, there we go. Everything behaved just like it should. Like we've done before, we can go ahead and just drag layers into other layers to make them subsets if it's a group layer. And now all the switch layer information is retained. But if I select the bone layer, we can go ahead and come up to our bone tools 
and simply add bones like we've done before. If this is new to you, please go to the bone movies and learn a little bit more about this area. I'll go ahead and select influence. I'm going to have that much larger right there. Now we've got the ability to go ahead and move down the timeline and animate that bone behavior while the switch layer behavior is taking place. So I'm going to invoke a couple options here. I'll double click on the bone layer. I'll come over to my special bones preference area and turn on region binding instead of flexible binding. We learned why in an earlier movie. Now as I move down the timeline, let's say to frame 18, I'll grab my manipulate bone tool. That's also the keyboard shortcut Z. I'm simply going to move it this direction. I'm going to come down the timeline a little bit further. We can see the switch layer animating and move that back that way. I will go ahead and copy those two keyframes, move down to frame 36 and paste. And now we get this motion going on controlled by bones with switch layer action taking place. Now this is that interpolated switch layer that we've got going on for smooth animation. So we've created our keyframes, told the system what we want it to do, those key elements. It figures out what's going on between and we start getting some very sophisticated motion very easily. That's how we begin using keyframes in Anime Studio Pro. In our next movie, we'll take a look at how to control and finesse basic motion.